thank you everyone for staying at the last talk. <laughs> and um, uh, yeah, as uh, Michelle said, I'm going to talk about the polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons and the mineral interaction. So what is catalysis? Catalysis is uh, the process of lowering the barrier of a chemical reaction by adding something called catalyst. This catalyst brings together two elements in such a way that uh, they can, their reaction is maximized on the surface of the catalyst. This has been suggested before that it happening in the space by Gold and St. Peter in 1963, where they talk about the formation of uh, molecular, molecular hydrogen on the surface of dust particles. So this is important because it suggests that in the absence of an en energy source, you can produce uh, more complex or bigger molecules. And our approach is uh, in the laboratory. So what we did was uh, purchase the Harix low temperature reaction chamber. This uh, setup is used for pharmaceutical purposes, but we modified it so we can use it for astrophysics. And um, currently we can hold a uh, pressure of 10 to the minus seven. Uh, for those who work with uh, uh, high vacuum setups, you know that it's not that good, but Bear with me. And um, uh, we can control the temperature inside our chamber, and uh, also we can um, irradiate our samples. So here is where we mix our powder samples, and um, is where we can um, study uh, in situ using infrared. Uh, here, uh, this, is a, this is a thermocouple where we can study the temperature variations inside the chamber. We have some gas inlets where we pump um, the chamber. We have a dewer where we can deposit uh, liquid nitrogen and we could cool down our sample. Do this is the dome that we use to seal up our mini chamber. And those ports are for infrared and this one is for ultraviolet. And we have modified uh, this dome so we can deposit some gases directly on top of the sample, and uh, this is where we attach our ultraviolet lamp. So our goal is to work uh, as realistic as possible, and for that we want to study some uh, composition of meteorites or cosmic dust, but as you may know, there is no such thing as just one meteorite composition. It's a full range of different elements, and for because of that, it makes uh, this study really difficult. So we start with the simple things. We we start with titanium dioxide, aluminum oxide, and we are building our set up to more complex things like olivines and pyroxenes. So our um, subject of a study is PAHs, mostly because they are tough. They can survive space-like conditions. So and it's the same. We want to build ourselves up to more complex things. So we first start with simple molecules like anthracene, then some coronine, and other like IBA. So we have done some experiments with coronine and titanium dioxide. So we treat the titanium dioxide for possible contaminations, and then we mix it up with coronine, we put it inside our chamber, seal it, pump it, and wait for uh, a day to have a good vacuum. But what we found out, oh, first, uh, this is, uh, the spectrum of coronine with KBR. KBR is an infrared transparent uh, compound, so you can see the nice spectrum of coronine. And as when you mix it with titanium dioxide, you see this huge absorption of the titanium dioxide. So um, um, we let our sample to rest for one day inside the chamber. And what we found was that uh, something was going on. Uh, this is the difference uh, spectrum of coronine and titanium dioxide, which means that the deposition was subtracted from one hour, two hours, three hours, and so on. So what we are looking at here is 
some bands growing, and these bands are aliphatics. These bands are the asymmetric CH2 and the symmetric CH2. So what is going on? We're having hydrogenation of the pHs. And something that I didn't say is this, is, this was made at room temperature, uh, vacuum conditions, no radiation, and uh, no um, temperature apply. So it's by itself. So, but uh, what is going on? If I have a vacuum, how I'm hydrogenating these PAHs? So as I told you, the vacuum is not the best, and people who can work with a high vacuum setup, they know that uh, from atmospheric pressure to 10 to the minus 3 tor, you are pumping out the air from your chamber. And from the 10 to the minus 3 to 10 to the minus 9, you are in the drying region where uh, the pressure inside the chamber is driven by the water inside the chamber. And this water is stick to the walls of the chamber. So we have water inside. And this water is reaching the titanium dioxide. Titanium dioxide is extremely good at catalyzing stuff. So what happened in uh, the surface of this titanium dioxide is that this water is breaking into hydrogen and OH. So at the end, you have a pool of hydrogen that can react with your sample. And this is what, this is what we have at the end, hydrogenation of coronary. So, uh, but uh, we wanted to make sure that that was uh, the, what we were seeing, it was hydrogenation and not some contamination. So uh, using our high vacuum setup, we deposit uh, hydrogenated coronin as a thin film. Um, we had this spectrum here where you can see that the position of the hydrogenated bands are pretty much the same and the band shape is pretty much uh, similar. But when you compare thin films with powders, you see that the bands are not the same, and they actually have a shift. So what is going on is uh, what we are seeing is actually hydrogenation or is contamination. What we think is going on, uh, we made use of the NASA AMSPA database, is that these are the aliphatic bands for hydrogenated coronin. So, if you hydrogenate coronin in one side, but with different configurations, you have different bands with different positions and different profiles. The same if you hydrogenate coronin at the opposite sides with different configuration. And actually, this one gives you just the uh, symmetric CH2. So uh, in conclusion, yes, we are having hydrogenation, and it's different from the one that we had in the high vacuum setup. We have done also some experiments with anthracene and aluminum oxide because we wanted to, to be sure that everything that was happening was on the surface of the, the, our dust particles. So um, we mix some anthracene with aluminum oxide, but this aluminum oxide, we mix it with D2O for a day. Then the next day, we dry up the aluminum oxide. But of course, you still have some uh, D2O molecules attached to the aluminum oxide after you dry it up. And if we uh, zoom in this region, this in red is the a spectrum of an the deuterated anthracene in aluminum oxide, fully deuterated anthracene. And this one is the spectrum of regular anthracene in aluminum oxide. And here you can see the aromatic for regular anthracene, and this is the aromatic region for the fully deuterated anthracene. What we had is uh, this is the spectrum of regular anthracene on aluminum oxide with the 2 o And this is the spectrum of anthracene, fully alterated anthracene in aluminum oxide. And if you wait a day with this experiment of deuterated anthracene, uh, you find out that uh, under vacuum conditions, anthracene sublimates. So you end up with a residue like this here. And if we compare that one 
to the anthracene on aluminum oxide treated with D2O, you find that you, we have these bands perfectly matched here. So what we are having is the exchange of hydrogen and deuterium in the pHs. So, as some conclusions, um, in the absence of an energy source, no UV, no temperature, we are having hydrogenation and we are having deuterium hydrogen exchange. So what is going on if we put some UV there or we cool our sample or we heat it up? That's coming up. So we want to thank NASA and the NAICAN 7 for the funding of this project. Thank you. We have time for questions. Maybe two or three. Uh, ben Pierce, McMaster University. Thank what did you mean when you said from 10 to the minus 4, 10 to the minus 9, 4, your vacuum is controlled by water? Yes. Um, when you enter the region of 10 to the minus 3 to 10 to the minus 9, you, you are under vacuum conditions. But is not a perfect vacuum. So, um, so what, uh, what it, it means is that uh, you have removed most of the air that it was inside, but some water was, is still stick to the surface of the chamber. And uh, that means uh, the dark water is uh, affecting, uh, well, not affecting, you're trying to remove that water. So if you go lower than 10 to the minus nine, you enter the hydrogen regime where molecular hydrogen is the one driven the, driving the pressure inside. So it's no more water, but it will be hydrogen. So you are trying to remove hydrogen below 10 to the minus nine. Okay. Any other question? All right, then let's thank yes, all, uh, Gustavo and all our speakers. Thank our speakers. Um,